We read in the Word of God from Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs 20. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion, whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. The sluggard will not plow, that's spring plowing, by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer. But when he has gone his way, then he boasteth. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice make war. He that goeth about as a tale-bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord. He shall save thee. Divers' weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make inquiry. A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth the wheel over them. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so do stripes the inward parts of the belly. May God bless our reading of his word. Our text this morning is taken from the seventh verse. It's the request of Gerald and Deb that we look at verse 7 of Proverbs 20. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. 
we may summarize this passage this way. When a righteous man walks in integrity, then his children are blessed. It is truly a blessing for anyone, even when they are older, to look back and realize that they were raised by parents who walked in integrity. The focus of this text is that concept, integrity. And so, with that in mind, I've changed the theme a bit so that the theme is the fruit of walking in integrity. You could also say it's the fruit of walking, the fruit of integrity, but maybe more accurately, the text is portrayed the fruit of walking in integrity. Truly, uh, a very wonderful text for this occasion. We want to first look at the just man and his integrity. Then secondly, we want to consider what it is to walk in integrity. And then thirdly, we will consider the blessing that the children receive from that walk. So the just man and his integrity, walking in in that integrity, and then the blessing which the children receive. First then, the just man and his integrity. The word just really has the idea of being righteous. So this man and woman who are parents, are just or righteous. We would define just or righteous this way. It is one who are regenerated and justified by the grace of God, regenerated and justified by the grace of God, and then are seeking, striving, to walk in righteousness. There's two parts. They are legally justified. That means this, that they may know by faith that when they stand before God in their conscience, as He sits on a judgment seat, that they stand before him just as if they'd never sinned. No, even better. They stand before God just as if they did everything right. Legally, they are spotless. Faith takes a hold of the work of Jesus and the grace of God and says that. What does it mean to be baptized in the name of the Son? That He doth wash us in His blood from all our sins, incorporating us into His death and resurrection, so that we are righteous, freed from all our sins, and accounted righteous before God. That's the one part of what it is to be a just man or woman. The other part is this. Realizing that the God who justifies is also the God who sanctifies. That he doesn't just make this declaration and then leave us on our own, but he continues to perform that work which he hath begun by his grace. Then it is to be spiritually or, and or ethically righteous. The just is somebody who is spiritually, ethically righteous. The same faith 
which leads them to take a hold and hear God say, you are just as if you did everything right for the sake of Jesus Christ. Is the same faith that says, now I want to live in gratitude for what he has done for me. I want to live my life according to God's will in every part of it. That's the fruit of the work of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be baptized in the name of the Spirit? That the Holy Ghost assures us that He will dwell in us and sanctify us. That He will apply unto us that which we have in Christ. Daily, not only the washing away of our sins, but the daily renewing of our lives. So righteous, just, is the realization by faith that God says, for Christ's sake and His grace, I am righteous. That's how God looks at me. My conscience may accuse me. Other people may tell me. So I've got two voices shouting at me, you're a rotten sinner. But my faith says, God says, something very different. And that same faith that takes a hold of my judicial justice, righteousness, takes a hold of the effort of the, to walk in thankful gratitude according to the will of God. Now that just man, woman, has integrity. Now that's an interesting word. The, I, the root meaning of integrity means to be whole or complete. To be whole or complete. That same Hebrew word, if you turn to Proverbs 2, is translated upright. Chapter 2, verse 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Integrity. Upright. Chapter 10, verse 9. He that walketh uprightly, I'm sorry, he, yeah, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely. Walks in his integrity. In Job 1, God makes this judgment and statement about Job. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was, here it's translated, perfect and upright. Now the Hebrew word for upright is a different Hebrew word. But the word that's translated perfect is the same one. Integrity, upright. Job was Perfect and upright. The idea is this. The knowledge that God gives of salvation in Jesus Christ, the knowledge that God gives to one of his word, doesn't just stop there. It's not half a work. Remember the word perfect, upright, integrity is whole, complete. But this knowledge inspires a life. It goes into every part of his life. There's not a wall around Sunday. And then the other days. There's not a way to live when I'm standing in front of the elders or the minister. And then there's another way. And I don't reserve a box around Friday night and Saturday night. And everything else is different. Whole, complete, integrity. Integrity is to live one's life 
as an open book. That's the way it's been described. To live one's life as an open book. He has nothing to hide. He lives out what he believes. He doesn't fear that he's going to be found out about something. Integrity. Someone said it this way. Integrity is to character what 2020 is to vision. Perfect vision. Well, the best vision humans can have is 2020. Not 2040, not something different. 2020. What that 2020 is to vision, so integrity is to one's character. He is living out his life. He is living out his faith. Now, to be upright, whole, and complete, to be a a person of integrity, the world will sometimes tell us that integrity is when you take up a cause, like homosexuality, or feminism, and you push it, stand up for it. Biblical integrity, to be whole or complete, a man and a a woman of integrity has a standard of living. What is integrity? What does it mean to be whole and complete? And the answer to that is very simple, not complicated. You all can already guess what I'm going to say. It is to live according to the standard of God's law. That God's law sets the description of the bounds of integrity. And one lives within that. Listen, the biblical proof for that is 1 Kings 9, verse 4. God, talking to Solomon, says, If thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, To do according to all that I have... What is integrity? To do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments. So, a person of integrity, biblical integrity, is one who is striving to apply the awareness of God and His work and His commands to this part of his life, to that part of his life, to that part of his life, to that part of his life, to the whole of it, so that he doesn't have any, as we we said, a box or a wall around some part of his life that he tucks underway and, and doesn't want anybody to know or see. It is interesting that in the book of Proverbs, Integrity is contrasted. Maybe this will help you understand it. Integrity is contrasted to being perverse. Go back to Proverbs 10, verse 9. He that walketh in inte- uprightly walketh surely. But he that perverteth his ways shall be known. To pervert. A pervert. We don't use that word that way, but let's see what it really means. It means to be crooked, to be twisted, a perversity is to take something that's good and put a twist to it so it comes out swirly and not straight, not plumb. Or level. Okay. This is what it means to be just and righteous. And this is what it means to have integrity. The proverb describes walking in integrity. 
the just man shall who walketh in his integrity. To walk is a very common biblical figure of speech that fits with integrity. They, they really go together hand in hand because to walk refers to the whole of one's life. Your walk is what people hear you say. Your walk is how you live in your home and outside of your home. Your walk is your inner thoughts, your desires, your motives, your dress. Your walk consists of what you want to do to be entertained. Your walk consists of the friends you have. Your walk consists of who's not your friends. That's your walk. To walk in integrity means, because integrity is, is God's law, God's will, means this. Think, think of integrity being a huge sphere. That's integrity. The parameters are all described and fit with this is God's will. A man who walks in integrity takes his life, that's another sphere, and he walks it inside this sphere of integrity. The larger sphere is integrity, but we take our life, and to walk in integrity is to say, I want my life within this sphere. I want the whole of my life within that sphere. Now, right away, let's, let's be aware that in this life, nobody is perfect, so that their, their sphere is always inside the sphere of integrity. God said of Abraham that he was perfect. God said it of David. It said of Job. Well, just take those three men. We know that Abraham deliberately lied more than once about his wife. We know that David committed adultery and murder. We know that Job challenged the wisdom and the right of God to bring him the afflictions that he bore. So it does, they, yet the scriptures describe them, and God himself describes them as men of integrity. So it does not mean that we have to be perfect, sinless, but the one who is aware of God's decree about him in Christ, even though, take Lord's Day 23, it says it best, even though my conscience accused me that I've grossly transgressed all the commandments of God, kept none of them, and am still inclined to only sin. That's my old man. In spite of knowing that, this is how God declares me to be. And that is more true than what I experienced with my old man. So I am going to take by faith what God says to be true. Now, because I know what God says, and he gives me the Holy Spirit to enable me to walk in that righteousness and give me the desire to do it, I will to do and want to do that which is right then. God declares that. That's his mercy. That's the grace of his justice. For the sake of Christ, by grace alone. And he says, you're just. Now the just man, knowing that truth, strives. Now how does that striving show itself? So how does it show itself in people who still sin, have an old man, and spots adhere to every work? This way. An a walk of integrity is a walk of humility. 
And that humility arises out of, I haven't done anything right yet. Not in the whole of my life. I have never done anything perfect. And yet God says, so my gratitude to God for what he's done and what he says about me is going to be evidenced in, I don't cover up. I don't, I say, I'm sorry. To cover, wasn't that one of the Proverbs we read here? To cover and to hide our sin and sinfulness. That's not integrity. That's perversity. That's twisting the truth. To be a man or a woman of integrity is to say, I am a sinner. That's the truth. That's the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. I am a sinner. And, and, I'm forgiven. And I'm righteous. Now, now, sometimes I, I can't wrap my mind around both of them, but both are true. The Bible tells me so. And so my life is an effort constantly to walk within the sphere of God's law. That's what it is to be honorable. That's what it is to do what's right. And there are going to be varying degrees of that. And the varying degrees is evidenced in that Abraham was. But, but Lot, a just man, the Bible says, that just man Lot did not have the integrity to the degree that his uncle Abraham did. Eli was a man of justice, God said he was just. And he strove to walk in integrity, but not to the degree that David did. Not at all. God doesn't just present this truth here in our text. The just man walketh in his integrity just as a fact and indicative, but there is imperatives God gave an imperative to Abraham. We quoted in the baptism form from Genesis 17, 7. Listen to Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abram was ninety and nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Upright, a man of integrity. Moses left the children of Israel with a final speech. In the course of that speech, knowing he was going to leave them and they were going to go into that crooked country of Canaan filled with crooked people. He said to them, For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Thou shalt be perfect. Same word. Walk in integrity. Be upright when you walk. God doesn't give this as a choice. God gives this as a command. Now our text talks about parents. Knowing justification, knowing the gift of the Holy Spirit, all given by grace, for Christ's sake alone, live out.
complete. That knowledge in every sphere of their life. In business. In how you communicate to the people to whom you want to sell a house. So that you build a reputation. That Gerald Feenstra, he's honest. When you make a mistake, sorry, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Forgive me. This is the way we have to do it. Walk in integrity. Walk in integrity in a marriage. That we look at each other the way God looks at us. That we observe and strive regardless of what we think the other deserves or has done to us. Integrity. I'm going to live my life in this relationship the way God has justified me and the way he is sanctifying me. Doesn't make any difference what I think they deserve or what they deserve in Everybody else's judgment. Integrity is to live and complete and fill out one's knowledge of faith in that sphere of one's life. In every part, how we play games, church league, And how we talk. And how we visit. To live in integrity is going to mean I want to know that sphere of what it is to be whole and complete and live in integrity. I want to know what that sphere is. And so it's going to be putting oneself in the word. See, because I not only want to know that sphere of what it is to be upright in God's eyes, but I also want to be reminded and stimulated and motivated again and again and again to be there by knowing God says I'm justified and God is sanctifying me. What has God done for me? So over and over, it's going to be the Word that's going to give me I am just. And it's the Word that's going to tell me this is what it is to be in integrity and upright. So the Word is where we're going to be. We're going to not just read it, but meditate on it. We're going to open ourselves up and let it come and admonish and correct. It's going to be the Word that's going to be on which we focus. And prayer, and prayer. Constant in watching through the Scriptures and prayer. When they're neglected, scriptures, prayer, then we eventually become like Lot. But when we use them, then they're going to be evidenced in the integrity of an Abraham and a David and a Job. Because what you find in Abraham, David, and Job after they sinned, is this. I'm going to quote Job. I repent in dust and ashes. I am vile. You see all these open sores, leaking pus, stinking me up? Well, they're not just on the outside. I am vile. That's me inside. That's the word he used. That made him a man of integrity. I didn't make him nothing. The world may say, admit you're wrong and you're, you're doomed. God says, admit you're wrong and you're a man of integrity. 
That's God's standard. Now, the, the text adds, his children are blessed after him. That's because that same miraculous grace that is for Christ's sake only, that declares a sinner to be just as if he did everything right, is a grace that uses that kind of a walk and the example that kind of walk gives to bring blessing to the parents and to the children. Blessing. Objective, objectively, the word means to be the recipient of God's blessing. Subjectively, it means to be happy. Blessed is to be happy. Take the Beatitudes. You can say, happy, every time you read blessed. Objective blessing leads to happiness. The title for Psalter number 360 was right. Happiness. We sang it in 326 in our response to the law. The Lord's commands which I have loved still new joy impart. When parents walk in integrity, then they know God's fellowship. They know friendship. Oh, that's right. That's the word covenant. They know covenant with God. They enjoy that friendship. Though they, though they see sin all the time, their gratitude just keeps growing because that God says, I have made an eternal covenant of grace with you. Sure, you sin, but don't continue in it and realize that the relationship I've established with you and with you and with you is an eternal covenant. I don't change. It's everlasting relationship. It's going to go forever. Oh, my sin. Yes, yes, it's there, but I've covered it, and I don't change in my relationship. Praise the Lord. Really? I'm still forgiven? Yes. That's the way God comes. And what can you experience with that blessing but joy and happiness? You have hope. Sure, there's trials, but now you see the trials as given through the hands of a father who's got a relationship with you, and he's not going to leave you. And you may hurt terribly, and you may have all kinds of feelings of doubt, but God's going to come and say, wait a minute, my relationship, my covenant is not changed. You mean even though it seems like God says, yes, nothing's changed, my hand you still got a hold of yours. It's hard. It's not easy. But I am with you. Joy. And blessing. And that's what makes marriage work. That's what makes homes, even in hardships, to be places of calm, quietness, and joy then instead of having the, the, the little joys that the devil says, you do this, you're going to have fun, and he never tells us that it's only going to be for a very short time, and then there's bitterness, and there's an evil conscience. I hope nobody finds out. 
That's, that's, the, that's the joy of the devil. This blessing never stops. Now, what God says, the blessing is not only for the parents, there's a blessing for the children. That's the text. He goes further than what we would. His children are blessed after him. What does that mean? Every single one of them? No. Nope. Doesn't say that. But God is a God of grace. And that grace is miraculous. And what that miraculous grace does is he takes even the weakest examples and he uses them. Because those parents are working with the word and prayer. They're working with the word and prayer, the word and prayer. And they strive to live it, integrity, and they set that in front of their children so that they say, this is the sphere of my life, and I want to set that same sphere before my children. It's, well, they're not, they're just kids, or they're teenagers, and what are you? No! Here's the sphere of integrity. This is what God demands. He doesn't have a lower standard for the teenage kids. You got to expect, no! So the parent sets before the child, you violate it, there's some discipline. There's some admonitions. Sometimes I don't give that discipline in the correct way, and I'm sorry, I'm going to repent. But nevertheless, there's the admonitions, and there's the discipline, and there's the comfort. The word is brought. Here's the sphere we walk in. And those children in whom God miraculously performs that work of grace. You see, Muslim children who believe in the Muslim religion are taught that by their parents, and they get it. And that's natural. There has, doesn't have to be any work of grace to believe what your parents teach you. The only time there needs to be a work of miraculous grace to believe what your parents teach you is the Scriptures. Because you got a nature that won't believe it. Can't, can't believe it to be true. Believe and love a Jesus they've never seen? It takes grace. It's a miracle. Everybody else, natural. But God uses the instruction that you give with your prayer. He gives his grace and spirit to those who sincerely and continually ask for them of him. You keep praying. Work in Bryce and work in Cole. Work, Lord. Work in their little hearts and their minds to understand the truth. Now tonight, faith takes a hold of what God has revealed. That's what we're going to learn tonight. And we pray, give them faith to believe. Give them faith to live out of that faith in the sphere of integrity. What a blessing to be raised in a godly home of integrity. Just talk to those who haven't been, who've not been raised within the sphere of the word and over whom no prayers have ever been read and prayed for them. And then you, you listen to how they had to live their lives. And then they'll look at you and they'll look at your children and they'll say, you don't know what you've got. And they're right. We are so blessed. And 
therefore happy. Happy. Joyful. Children, sons and daughters. Shall about thy table meet. Walk in integrity. They might not say so now, but they will. And God says it already. Blessed are the children of parents who walk in integrity. That you want this verse shows that that's what you want for your lives. May God bless you and all of us. Amen. Father, we thank Thee for this word. It inspires us to work the harder, to pray the more, to live according to Thy word in humility and gratitude. For what amazing grace that would save even us and then use the means of us to save children. Not all and not only, but that any would be saved. We thank Thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.